Luke chapter 7. Got it? Say amen. amen. Ain't got to say hold on. Luke chapter 7. Verse 47. Wherefore well, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Let's pray. Father, as all you can, God, I pray you have your way. Father, in every heart, every life, and every mind, Father, is gathered here, Lord. God, if any among us is lost and unknown after you, your son, Father, God, I pray that all you can, God, convict them, Father. Save them as all you can, Lord. And Lord, God, I just pray as all you can as well, God, to give us this day what we need, Lord. God, we love you. And we thank you, God. I ask all you can, God, please forgive me, Lord, all my shortcomings and my failures, Lord, God, and my faults, Father. Hide behind your precious cross, God, as all you can, and to speak God through me, Lord. I love you once again. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Walk across the house. Shake somebody's hand. It's good to see you. Until we can ever get to the point in our life where we give God everything. He'll never use us fully. That's why we'll never be who we need to be in Jesus until we get to the point where we give God our everything. Right. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. No more harder than it was when Jesus died on a cruel old rugged cross. To show me and women, boys and girls of all ages, from all ethnicities, from all backgrounds, that I love you 
uh, we have got to make sure, my brothers and sisters, that we are really giving God our own. Yeah. Our own. Yeah. My grandmother, God rest her soul, had a say that she said, she always said, did you do your very best? Now I'd say, well, you're yeah, pretty close. And she'd say, well, how close? Did you get 99%? I said, yeah, I get 99%. She'd say this. Yeah. But well, when it comes to Jesus, 99 won't do it. That's right. That's right. Because he wants it all. He wants it all. Amen. I look at what I gave up. And what I gave. Since I come to Jesus, yeah. I want to let you know yeah. that the game far outweighs what I ever gave up. Yeah. Matter of fact, I look back and I really didn't give up nothing but hell. Yeah. And the game the everlasting life. Amen. Had gained my name pinned down yeah. in the land book, in the land book of life. Yeah. Had gained the promise of everlasting life. Yeah. Had gained the promise of no more sickness, no more disease, no more fire left, no more goodbye. I look at what I had gained since I asked Jesus to save me and it all that way. Everything I had before, I come to Jesus. Yeah. Never understood how mad one could think that you give up more than you gain. Do you understand that everything we work for down here can be gone like Amen. Right. Yeah. But the scripture said for us to build up our treasures or store up our treasures in heaven. Yeah. That's not because moth cannot do a corrupt them. Yeah. Dust cannot corrupt them. A thief cannot enter in and steal those things out. We <laughs> have to start giving him our everything and build up our treasures, not down here, but in heaven. Yeah, yeah. that is true. So true. Start talking about giving up everything. Let's face it. Nobody wants to give up nothing. No more. I look around and I'm doing so good. We fast six, eight, ten months. Not a food fast. I'm talking about a world of fast. If we were fast for my TV, if we were fast for my internet, if we were fast for my radio, if we were fast for my cell phone, if we were fast for all this mess of the world, and just get in God's word and let God speak to us. That is true. See, I'm still dumb enough to I still believe God still speaks to his children. Yeah, come on, Jesus. Yes. You say, you believe that? Yeah, we spoke through this morning. Let him know he's still peaky, he's still yeah. got it. Yeah. I'm just fine. Oh, yes. But here in the past, the scripture, Jesus, just came from being around the multitude. We all know that wherever he was at, there was a multitude of people. Uh, Everybody gathered around to see what he was going to do, what he could do, what he might do. Sometimes you wonder, did Jesus ever get weary? Did he ever get worn out? When he knew that all these people hung around him, let's see what he could do for them. Right. But Jesus kept on loving him. Anyway. That's right. The Bible says, verse 36, one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. He went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. You know, it's funny when I see that today because how many Christian folks would welcome Jesus in their house? Come on in. But them old Pharisees that always try to disprove him, they let them on. And the Bible said he was invited, so he went. That's the thing about Jesus that I love. Yes. Mm -hmm. I tell you all the time, Jesus will never force himself upon anyone. No, that's no. right. But if you say, come on in, he'll say, I'm in. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Praise 
And the scripture said this, 37, and behold, a woman in the city which was a Now, when people see that, they flip out. <laughs> Don't find a way to identify what sin. People <laughs> caught up in the water because it didn't matter. <laughs> we so caught up on this one is a, this kind of sin, this one done this, this not. They're all sinners. That's right. You do know that being a homosexual takes the head of life in a lot of ways. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's only in the church where we classify sin. Yeah. Right. Right. And God just says all sin makes me sick. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, it don't matter what she did. It doesn't matter where she had come from. The Bible says she was a sinner. Yeah. What's important about that is that every single one of us could take our lives and our walk and our journey and put ourselves right there and be no better off than she was. Yeah. See, never get to the point you walk with God where you think you're better than somebody else. Because you'll find out real fast. Yeah, you know what That's right. Yeah. Amen. And the Bible says she was a sinner. And here Jesus was now going to the gentleman's house to eat. The scripture said it. That she was a sinner, but she knew that Jesus sat at me to come in to eat at the Pharisee's home. She brought in an alabaster box of wine. Very expensive. And most of the time, they're all set aside for preparing a body for burial. That's what they've done most of the time. And so it wasn't something you brought out every day to you. But I come to tell you, ain't every day that Jesus yeah, shows up at the house. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And when Jesus shows up at the house, you know what you give him? You bring him the very best. That's right. That stuff you had to hit away, that might give up saving for a rainy day. That's the day you go and you get all that stuff out, you cast all that stuff in, and you come and bring it and lay it down in the street. Because yeah. I want to tell you, whether in comparison with the glory, my brothers and sisters yeah, of Jesus, so there ain't nothing else mine. Yeah. That's why right. she went, she got that stuff. She just heard he was there. You know the greatest compliment anybody could ever give to church for the Levi and say he was there. Yeah, we'll there. <laughs> Not nobody's son, good, nobody preach good, none of that stuff, but that stuff don't matter in Jesus' sight. That's what matters. And I leave out every week knowing he was there because I am the church. And I carry him everywhere I go. So when I go to Walmart, I have church. When I go to the grocery store, I have church. When I go to work, I have church because I carry the church inside of me everywhere I go. And the Bible says this, that she come in and had this precious ointment and the Bible says stood at his feet behind him weeping. You know why? Because the mere presence of Jesus will convict a man or woman of That's sin. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell me you can willfully sin and it not bother you, <coughs> you are lost. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's Amen. right. And the Bible says she stood behind that. Didn't want to be noticed. <coughs> and again, we When I sit down, I ask myself, when's the last time I just got a little and just got all my hands? When's the last time I just wet before? Well, my heart literally broke before God. And the key to this whole thing is she was a sinner but got to the point in her life where she did not care what nobody thought about it. When God used us the most is when we get to the point in our lives where we don't worry about what nobody else says about us. That's right. When we don't care what nobody says, we don't care how they feel about how we worship, how we preach, how we sing, we don't worry about all that stuff, then God will use us. And the Bible says she got where she 
behind him and start weeping. And the Bible says, then she began to wash his feet with tears. A good place to get the attention of Jesus. That's me. Yeah. If you want God to move heaven, You want God to save a soul? Yes. Yeah. 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 You want God to restore a broken family or a broken home? Yeah. 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 Get at the truth. You want to see God here? Get at Him. No greater place, my brothers and sisters, could we be in 2016 than at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And yeah. after while she was there, she wept. And this is what I like about the whole thing. You'll never see her ask Him for anything. Right. 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 You know why? Because she just came off of yeah. everything she had. Yeah. 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 God will move on our behalf. Let him give him everything we have. Because <laughs> you know what happens when we give him everything we have? He will realize he's all we really need. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And the Bible said that here she was now. She began to wash his feet with her tears. And wiped them with the hairs of her head. Now the Bible talks about how the hair of a woman is her glory. Now you got to understand that feet in the Bible days, like the day, they ain't pretty. And they walked everywhere they went just about. So they probably did not smell good, did not look good, were not appealing at all. And she takes her glory when in the presence of a holy God and begins to wash his feet. Yeah. Now what we assume was the worst in feet was really the best place she could be. Right? Yeah. Amen. And as she cried, she took her hair down and started washing his feet. No doubt by now she had gained a crowd. Everybody was watching her. Everybody was looking at her. But you know what she kept doing? Amen. When you get to the point in your life to where yeah. nothing else will do but Jesus, let them look. Yeah. Let them talk. That's right. Let them lie. It don't make no difference. Just let them go. That's right. But I'm going to tell you something. When I get to where he's at, I don't care how you feel about it. That's right. I don't care what you think about it. And the Bible says she got where he was. And the Bible says this. Not only did she wipe the hair with the hair of his head, the Bible says she kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Ain't that something? She took something. That everybody else would have said was dirty. Yeah. Everybody else would have said was filthy. And cleaned it up real good. Tossed it up real good. And then got out what meant the most of it. No matter how long she had saved up money for this precious ointment. And took it and began to pour it on his feet. Now, all through the scripture we know. That whenever the oil would flow on well, the blessing, it was all the way from the head to yeah. But here we see her taking it straight to the feet. And what she did not know at the time was the blessing was not going to go from his head to his feet. They were going to go from his feet to her heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And as she was there and was watching him and anointing him, no doubt everybody just stood back and done what most people do when God does something you think should not be done, just stood back and just looked. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else pitched in, nobody else helped, nobody else thought it was a good idea. And the Bible said, first time I went to a Pharisee, which had asked him to come in, he wanted to buy him. He saw it, he spake within himself. I like this, because he said this within his heart. Newsflash, God knows what's in your heart. 
God hears what you ain't got the guts to say out loud. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible said he said within himself, if he was a real prophet, he'd know who and what man or woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Right. Come on. What he's saying was, well, if he really was who he said he was, he would let somebody like that touch him. And what he didn't realize was, it wasn't her touching him, it was Jesus touching her. That's what makes the difference, my brothers and sisters. It ain't us touching him, it's him touching us. Yes, You remember where you were the first time that he touched you? Come on, Lord. Come on, Brother. Yes. Like liquid sunshine. Yeah, amen. 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 From the head to the feet. Woo! That's why it flows when the glory of God touches a man or woman. And the Bible said this. He said, if you were really who you said you was, you would know. And the Bible said, verse 40, Jesus said, hey, I got something to say to you. Now I'm going to tell you. I took a class on prophecy and prophetic utterance in my college one time. And I've never been a big fan of somebody say, the Lord told me to tell you this. The Lord told me to die. I've never been a big fan of that. Because I feel like I've been in the family of God long enough. Yeah. Well, if God wanted me to do something, He's going to tell me to do something. Yeah. And I was sitting there. And they was about, I don't know, 78 people in this class. And this teacher was going around prophesying over people, saying different things. And in my mind, I said, I don't know about this junk. <laughs> and the very second that I said that, Brother Dan Bumgarner was sitting in my class. The very second I thought that in my mind, that man turned around and looked at me and said, God, just show me your face. And in my heart, I said, well, I hope he didn't tell you what I just thought. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand, God knows. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. <coughs> we can hide from each other. Yeah. But he knows. He knows. And the Bible said, he said, Simon, I need, let me say a little something too. He said, I ain't going to hate it. He said, verse 41, you know, it's good how Jesus always addressed people with little parables and little stories. He said, that was credit. He had two debtors. One owed him 500 pence, the other owed him 50. When they had nothing to pay, that was them boys were broke, they have a dime to give him. He forgave them both. He said, which one of them loved him the most? Now ain't that about like Jesus? Right in the middle of a serious discussion to break out a story about who loved him the most. And the Bible said, Simon said, I suppose that the one who we get together the most. And Jesus said, you rightly judged. He turned to the woman and said unto Simon, you see this woman over here? And by now, all the eyes and attention was on her. And I can't help but think, as everybody's looking at her, you know what I think she kept on doing? Stay right there at his feet. But she kept right on washing his feet. Because I believe in her mind, she said this, I've worked my whole life to get to this point, and I ain't letting nobody take me away from Jesus. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, when God saves you, yeah. when He seals you and fills you and thrills you, my man, calls you to do something, don't you let somebody come along and tell you you ain't supposed to do that. Right. If God called you to do it, stay right at the place you was right. when you heard Him speak to you and know that He loves you enough that if His order is changed for you, He'll come to you and go through nobody else. Right. And the Bible said this. He said, look at this woman over here. He said, yeah, what, what about her? He said, see her? I entered into your house. You didn't give me no water because they had a 
teaching back in. When somebody come to your house, first thing they did was give them water to wash your feet. Because you don't want to walk through your house getting dirt and junk all over. He said, you didn't give me no water. But she washed my feet with her tears. Yes. Amen. Wiped them with the hairs of her head. Amen. Verse 4 5 said, you give me no kiss. Because they greeted each other with a kiss. But this woman, <coughs> since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil. You didn't even know it. But she anointed my feet. Yes. You know, a lot of times we show God how much we love God by what we do. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and the way to show God that we really love Him ain't what we do when we're in the middle of the crowd. Amen. It's what we do for Him. Nobody else around. Right. Amen. Anybody can live for God and follow a bunch of people. Right. Yeah. But I'm talking about you like nobody else. Like, look. That's right. How you live for Jesus then. Yeah. Show Amen. him how much that you right. love him. Amen. And the scripture said that here she was now. Doing all these things for it. He said this is well 47. He said, I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Right. Amen. Why? She loved much. That's right. Even as a saint, you know what she wanted to be? Where he was. Yeah. And check this out. It cost her everything. It cost her her name. It cost her her reputation. It cost her her finances. But you know what she did? She gave up And I think I'm not mine. She's saying it's worth it all. Yes, yeah. Just to be right. his child. Worth it all. And the Bible said that he said, look, she's forgiven. She loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same love little. He said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. The beautiful part here of this story is the whole time, her and Jesus had a conversation that did not take place on the outside. It took place on the inside. Yeah. She showed Jesus. First of all, how much she meant to him. And then Jesus, and all that Jesus can do. But you don't understand that in order for a man to be saved, Jesus got to be present. Yeah. 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 A man will not yeah. get born again if Jesus is not on the same. If he ain't around, it won't happen. Right. And he spoke directly to oh. her heart. And he gave her the greatest thing she could ever have. Yeah. Forgiveness of sins. Yeah. The one thing that's got people on more medication and more pills and more hospital with nerve breaking down more anything we're looking around to see because of unconfessed sin. Yeah. That's right. Unconfessed sin will eat you from the guts out. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. The scripture said this. He said, Your sins are forgiven. Verse 49, and they that sat there begin to say within themselves. Who is this that forgives sins also? They wanted Jesus to come to the house. The Pharisee did. But he really didn't want him to come to the house. I look around today. I see people that say they want to be saved. Right. Yeah, I don't want to be saved. Yeah. You know, my knock with you ever play Monopoly? One of the most coveted cars you can get is get out of jail free. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody gets that car, man, hold on that car. Get out of jail free. 
And what happens is, everybody thinks they just lay on Jesus' side of the for to get out of hell before you call They cry whatever they want to, however they want to. Yeah. And keep on living the way they live. So you do know you can't fool God whether you say it or not. That's right. That's right. Amen. We'll never stand before God and God say, Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. There is no name pinned in the Lamb Book of Life by accident. Right. Or happenstance or coincidence. That's right. God knows right now, the Bible, He knows those that are His and those that are. He knows. He knows. He don't have to look twice. He knows. And the Bible said they said, who is this? Who is this man that can forgive sins? And when I see that, it breaks my heart because people want to know Jesus but never truly know Jesus. Matter of fact, hell is a very religious place. Because hell is full of people that wanted to know Jesus but never know Jesus. Yeah. Verse 50, you know it's pretty neat because Jesus didn't never let anything distract him from his mission. My brother said, don't never let nobody distract you or sidetrack you from your mission that you brought on trucking along. And the Bible said he looked at a woman, he said, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Faith. You see, it took faith. Because how can a man won't be saved if they don't believe? That's right. It takes faith. Yes, it does. Faith. Faith. He said, no faith. And once again, I go back to, she never said a word. But her heart done all the talking. Says your faith. And this is what I love about salvation and it does. It gives you peace. It gives you peace that the world knows not of. Amen. It gives you that peace, the scripture said, that passes all understanding. Yeah. It gives us that peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. There's nothing like the peace that Jesus can give a man or woman. Nothing like that peace. There's nothing like that peace. Now sit back this week and share with some of you Wednesday. I had a water leak in my house. had a water line. That went to my refrigerator, had a hole in it, and it flooded my kitchen, soaked the floor and everything. So I started ripping the floor up, got the floor ripped up everywhere. Uh, still got it ripped up. And went to Lowe's to go get some yesterday, and it quit selling five years ago. Wow. And, uh, don't make it, it's all different sizes now. Long story short, any kind of had wasn't going to work, wasn't going to fit, different color. And they got on the phone and they called 12 different states. And, uh, and they actually found two boxes for me in New Mexico. <laughs> they found four boxes in California. And uh, said they'll ship them to me. I said, well, I'll take them. If you get them here, I'll take them. So anyway, they got them. Last Thursday, I got a text message from my bank that said, uh, Parker Hannafin, who well, ain't worked in two months, <laughs> made a deposit in my account. $434. I thought, man, this is something ain't right. As soon as I spend this, I know I'm going to have to go on back. <laughs> and I done investigate and found out that when I left Parker two months ago, I had so much vacation left. Praise the Lord. Amen. They had to keep me on a payroll. For another whole month, and he qualified me for a bonus check that paid for my fault. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. So that's how good God is. Yes. Amen. 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 That's how good God is. Yes, He is. Let's thank Him.